so here we have a uh, representation of a perfectly competitive market. We've got our demand curve and supply curve. And we've got here a graph of the cost curves of a representative firm from that market. And what we mean by that is uh, we're assuming that all the firms who are participating in this market, supplying to this market, are identical. So what is true for one of the firms, we can say is going to be true for all the other firms as well. So we, can, we only need to look at one firm to know what's happening to all of them. That is our representative firm. So because this is a perfectly competitive market, we're assuming that the firms in this market, including this one, are price takers. They simply accept whatever the market price is because they have no market power, they have no capacity to influence the market price. The market price is the equilibrium price, the point at which the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied, and that's $8. So because this firm, and all the other firms, are price takers, that price of $8 remains unchanged irrespective of how much this firm produces, whether it produces 20 units of output, 50 units of output, um, 70 units of output, the price will remain at $8. And that means this firm's average revenue, its revenue per unit, will be identical to its costs, its marginal revenue, that is its revenue for each additional unit that it produces and that will be set by the market price. So we have a horizontal, marginal and average revenue curve. What's the optimal amount that this firm uh, will produce assuming that its uh, entrepreneur is a profit maximizing rational agent? We're going to say that we have a rule for that the optimal output is going to be the quantity where the marginal revenue of the last unit produced and sold equals the marginal cost of the last unit produced and sold. So that is at the point where the marginal revenue curve intersects with the marginal cost curve. And that gives us an optimal output of 70 units. This will be the profit maximizing output how much profit is being generated. Well, we know the revenue per unit, that is the average revenue. What about the cost per unit, the average cost? Well, that's given by the average cost curve. So for 70 units of output, we can see that the average cost, or the cost per unit for each of the 70 units will be $5. And from that, we can then easily calculate the profit per unit being generated. It's the difference between the revenue per unit, $8, and the cost per unit, which is $5. To find the total profit, it's just the revenue, the cost, it's just the profit per unit, which we just kept, which we just saw there, three dollars, multiplied by the number of units, seventy. So the profit area is given by this yellow rectangle. We can just do our quick calculation. The total profit is going to be the average profit times the output, or three dollars times 70 units. In other words, $210 profit. When we uh, shift the demand curve to the left and to the right, we can see that the equilibrium price is going to move as well. And that will then affect 
or shift the marginal revenue and average revenue curve for the individual firm. So let's say the, the demand for the product increases, the equilibrium price rises to $10 per unit, therefore the firm's marginal and revenue curve will rise to $10 as well. We find the optimal output for the firm, which will be where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Here, $75. Then, if we decrease demand, the demand curve shifts to the left, the equilibrium price will fall to $6. Correspondingly, the marginal and average revenue curve for the individual firm will shift downwards to six dollars as well. Where is the optimal output? The optimal output will be where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, which will now be lower. It will be at this point here, which is what, 62 or something like that. All right, so let's get rid of some of this spaghetti. What do we see is the function of the marginal cost curve of the individual firm here? Well, it's telling us the quantities that the firm, a rational profit maximizing firm, will supply at the various equilibrium prices, equilibrium market prices. At $6, the individual firm is willing and able to supply about 62 units of output. At $8, the firm is willing to supply 70 units of output. At $10, the firm is willing and able to supply 75 units of output. So what is this marginal cost curve functioning as? Well, it's functioning as a supply curve. It's telling us the various quantities supplied by an individual firm at various equilibrium prices. The marginal cost curve is the firm's individual supply curve. But uh, it's not the whole marginal cost curve, only down to the lowest point on the, or where it cuts, the average variable cost curve in the short run. That will be that portion of the marginal cost curve will function as an individual supply curve. Let's say the firm is making a profit as we're showing here. Now, in the long run, new firms can enter the market and will enter the market if the existing firms in the market are making economic profit, as our representative firm is, and therefore all the other firms are too. New firms entering the market is represented on the market uh, diagram by a shift in the supply curve to the right. So new firms are attracted. Supply increases, the equilibrium price falls, and as a result of that, we can see that the quantity that is optimal for our representative firm to supply decreases, but we can also see that the average profit gets smaller as well. So two things are happening here. One, the optimal quantity being supplied by the individual firm gets smaller, and the profit per unit is getting smaller as well. Therefore, the firm's overall total profit is also getting smaller. But nonetheless, profit is still being made, so new firms are attracted to the market, supply increases, and again, we can see that the quantity supplied gets a bit smaller, and the profit per unit gets a bit smaller as well. So the total profit area is squeezed even more. But nonetheless, there's still profit being generated. New firms are attracted to the market. 
supply increases, price falls, until we get to this point. At this point, the optimal output being produced by our firm is 50. And this firm is no longer generating any profit at that optimal output and that equilibrium price of approximately $4. You can see that the profit per unit, sorry, is zero, or in other words, the average cost at 50 is identical to the average revenue at 50. So there's no gap between average revenue and average cost. Average profit is zero. And therefore, there's no profit being generated. At this point, no, no new firms will be attracted to the market. Supply will stop increasing, will stop shifting right. And so we will have achieved a long run equilibrium in this case, where all of our individual rep, all of our individual firms, as shown by the representative firm, are breaking even. When we talk about the efficiency of a firm, there are actually different measures of efficiency or different even meanings of efficiency. If we're talking about pro what's called productive efficiency, we say that's the quantity where the average total cost is minimized. Allocative efficiency is the quantity where the price being paid by the buyers equals the marginal cost of producing the last unit um, that is consumed by those buyers. So where the value of the last unit to consumers, the price per unit, or in other words, the marginal benefit to consumers of the last unit consumed, just equals the cost of producing that last unit, the marginal cost. So in other words, it's where the price equals the marginal cost. So is that being shown here? Is that occurring in this case? If we look at the individual firm, we can see at that output of 50, the price for equals the marginal cost of four, so allocative efficiency is satisfied and the average total cost on this average total cost curve at 50 is also four. So productive efficiency is also satisfied. So we would say in a perfectly competitive market, in the long run, we would achieve productive and allocative efficiency. When we think about uh, this scenario of break even, we're talking about a, a situation where there's zero economic profit being generated. Zero economic profit. So let's, for example, say that the total revenue is 200 and the firm's explicit costs are $150. The explicit costs are the monetary payments made for resources that the entrepreneur doesn't already own. So they'll have to hire labor, they'll have to pay wages for that. They might have to hire space, we'll pay rent for that. They might have to pay for raw materials, which they don't have. They might have to uh, borrow money uh, from the bank in order to buy uh, machinery and tools, capital. So they pay interest on that. These are explicitly explicit monetary payments that are made. But that's not all of the costs. The 
as we saw in the previous diagram when we saw the average total cost curve, the average total cost curve doesn't just include the explicit costs, it includes within it the implicit costs of production as well. What are the implicit costs? This is the income that the entrepreneur forgoes in order to run their business. For example, they might have been earning a salary somewhere else working for some other business. They've given up that salary, they've foregone that salary in order to run their business. They might, for example, um, give up income that they could have earned by um, renting out a property which they own, but instead they're using that property for their own business. Okay. They might have had um, some amount of money in the bank or in government bonds or in the stock market or something like that, which could have been generating an income for them, but they've taken that money and used it in their own business. So they're not generating a revenue or an income from money that they could have spent on something else because they've used it to buy capital equipment, for example. So this money that the entrepreneur has foregone, has given up by running the business, is called the implicit costs of the business. There are no receipts for this, okay? But nonetheless, it's something that the entrepreneur a rational entrepreneur would take into account as a cost of running their business, something they've foregone. Now, the entrepreneur would need to be compensated for this lost income that they're experiencing due to running their own business. That is, the business, ideally, should generate sufficient revenue, not just to cover the implicit costs, but also to compensate them, the entrepreneur, for the losses that they're making by running their business, by not doing something else instead. So if the revenue from the uh, business covers those implicit costs, we call that the firm's or the entrepreneur's normal profit. So is the entrepreneur starving to death? No. If the firm is breaking even, then the entrepreneur is being compensated uh, for their time and effort and uh, risks that they're taking to run the business.